the best example of the structure guiding the shape, the three-dimensional shape, and then the physiological function is not a drug, but steroids. Steroids are naturally occurring or synthetic. These are organic compounds made up of a four-ring carbon skeleton with other functional groups attached. So the four rings are four six-carbon rings and then a five-carbon ring. This is the basic carbon skeleton for all of these steroids that have all different functions. And the reason why the functions are different are because some of the functional groups are different. And these functions are pretty widely different. So there are natural steroids like cholesterol. That's just a component of cell membranes. These are natural steroids, estradiol and testosterone. These regulate secondary sex characteristics. So basically, male versus female are due to these molecules. And this is the same basic shape as cholesterol. So what makes this so different where this is just a membrane component versus this makes men, men versus women, women, that's functional groups. So there's also synthetic steroids for birth control and bodybuilding. The steroids all have the same basic structure, but very different functions. This is comparing testosterone and estradiol. So testosterone is the male sex hormone and est estradiol is one of the female sex hormones. So what's the same about these two structures? That basic four ring carbon skeleton is the same for both of these. But what's different? Well, you can see testosterone has this ketone group and it has this alcohol group. Estradiol has the same alcohol group in the same position, but instead of the ketone group, this is an alcohol group. Now, what really is different though is that this is just an oxygen with a double bond on testosterone compared to this being an oxygen with a single bond and a hydrogen on the estradiol. It's kind of interesting when you think about how different men and women are, but really what's different is a few hydrogens and there's a double bond here compared to this whole uh, three double bonds in this benzene ring, but really the structures that drive the sex characteristics are the same, but these functional groups, this main one, the ketone versus the alcohol group, that's the main difference driving men versus women. It's basically just a few double bonds and a few hydrogens that make us different. There are a few other steroid differences between men and women, but the estradiol and testosterone are the main difference. There's also progesterone. This is only in women, pregnancy hormone, and, and this also is a steroid. It has the basic four ring carbon skeleton and the functional groups are different from testosterone and estradiol. This is the structure of cortisone, which is naturally present in the body as a steroid hormone. It has the same basic four ring carbon skeleton and its functional groups are different uh, from estradiol, testosterone, and progesterone. What this does is it suppresses the immune system and then reduces inflammation. Cortisone can be taken as a steroid drug and also reduce or decrease inflammation at the site. So if you've heard of or had a cortisone shot, um, usually for reducing inflammation at a joint, like at an ankle or a knee. On all of these steroids, they all have variations in functional groups and therefore variations in physiological functions. So these are some alcohol groups, the OH groups. These are ketone groups. So cholesterol has this basic structure that's mostly nonpolar. All that line angle drawing is carbons and hydrogens, which are nonpolar bonds. And these nonpolar bonds will insert into a cell membrane that is mostly nonpolar. This inserts into different cell membranes like the membranes in your arteries and veins. The yellow part or egg yolks of eggs have a high amount of cholesterol and also these two different types of foods have good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. Now you might recognize these foods because we looked at these in the nutrition chapter where these are foods like french fries, donuts, coconut oil, these are high in saturated fats. Well, those saturated fats lead to buildup of what is called bad cholesterol, and LDL stands for low-density lipoprotein. So these are proteins that have cholesterols attached to them, and this is in comparison to HDL, which stands for high-density lipoprotein. These are also proteins, and they also have cholesterol attached to them. However, 
What's attached uh, to HDL are these healthy fats that we recognize like oleic acid olive oil. So that's that cis fat. The food you eat contains healthy fats that attach to lipoprotein and then form HDL. Or if the food you eat contains unhealthy fats, they attach to lipoprotein and form LDL. When your blood cholesterol levels are measured, they're measuring the total amount of LDL, HDL, and triglycerides. LDL and HDL both circulate in your bloodstream. So this is a normal artery showing LDL and HDL circulating. And what happens is that the low density lipoprotein LDL will um, stack up and form plaques on the internal walls of an artery. So this is starting to stack up and over time LDL will form these plaques on the interior walls and atta attract more cholesterol. The uh, HDL does not form plaques, so HDL just flows through in a normal artery and does not stack up, but what HDL does is it removes cholesterol from the plaques or from the cholesterol that's attached to these LDL plaques. So HDL is called good cholesterol because it can remove cholesterol or plaque buildup, and LDL is called bad cholesterol because it adds to build up inside the arteries and then this narrowed artery eventually can lead to uh, heart disease. So this blockage when it pinches off then leads to a heart attack when it's in the cardiac artery.